Netherlands have built themselves quite the reputation of being giant killers at world events. They began their 2024 Men's T20 World Cup campaign with a game which they entered as favourites, and they showed why. A comprehensive win over Nepal. They bowled Nepal out for 106, and then chased it down with six wickets in hand and eight balls to spare. On Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Cricket for timeout. We cover that game uh, with the privilege of having Tom Moody, who we had the pleasure of having with us for two months of the IPL, who's now calling the game on commentary duties at the World Cup. Tom, pleasure to see you. And that was quite comprehensive from Netherlands. Yeah, it was a, it was a good uh, win from Netherlands. But, you know, from the outset, it, it was probably a little bit closer than what a lot of people will think looking at the scorecard. Um, you know, look, it was a total that uh, Nepal will look at and think, well, gosh, if we only got 130 or 140 on the board, uh, we would have been in for a real um, a fright to uh, to the Netherlands batting. But uh, they held their nerve, and particularly Max O'Dowd at the top of the order managed to navigate, you know, some quite tricky conditions at times to be able to see them home safely. Yeah, it was a win set up by the Dutch bowlers, an important toss to win. I caught on to the details on the commentary, which was a pleasure listening to this time around. Uh, but... Winning the toss was one thing. Their bowlers doing the job the way they, they did, especially Tim Pringle, commendable. Yeah, look, yeah, again, it was quite a seamer friendly uh, surface. So if you got the ball in the right area, the ball did seam around a little bit. There was some swing early on, particularly from King uh, Kingma. Um, he was, you know, quite lively and also got, so, you know, beat the outside edge on a regular basis. But it was the left arm spin, as you said, of Tim. Uh, Pringle that uh, that did the damage, you know, picking up three wickets uh, and also securing a player of match award. So he was uh, he was the real difference between the two sides. But the depth of the seam bowling attack that the Netherlands had, uh, and as you uh, touched on, you know, winning the toss and taking advantage of some quite heavy overcast conditions was probably the the real challenge that the uh, the Nepalese batting uh, group couldn't deal with. Yeah, just on Pringle, usually when we see spinners operating in the power play in T20s, there's a particular type of bowling. But there was uh, an element of old school, slow left arm bowling with the two wickets yeah, he got earlier in the innings, both <clears throat> tossed up. Very much so. It was great to see, actually, because it's so easy for a, a spinner, whether it's a left arm spinner or any spinner that bowls in the power play, to, to take that sort of approach of being a defensive bowler for an over or two in that power play. But he was quite aggressive in the way that he went about it. He got the ball up and over the top and, you know, a lot of overspin on the ball and threw the ball up there and challenged the outside edge. Uh, and he enjoyed the extra bounce on this surface in Dallas. There was, uh, it was a, an immaculate pitch. It really was a, a sensational looking pitch, but it did have a bit of extra bounce, which he enjoyed, uh, which I think helped him pick up those wickets. Uh, from a Nepal perspective, that batting effort you touched upon uh... On, on commentary, the need to assess conditions better and perhaps adjust to them once they see it. That is something they will learn as they build forward at the big stage. Yeah, and the one thing we got to, you know, I suppose respect is uh, the Nepal side's a very young side, a very talented side, but a very young side. Uh, and they would have rarely seen conditions like this where the ball did bounce and carry through to the keeper sort of around chest height at times, the ball swinging in the air. Uh, and it was nearly like they were playing a brand of cricket that was pretty much suited to, uh, you know, pretty flat conditions, pretty good batting conditions where you can stand and deliver. So, you know, they, they'll learn a lot from this, ex this exposure and this experience around looking to, you know, build a total in a different way than just finding the boundary. So I'm sure in their debrief, they'll talk about, you know, having to, you learn how to rotate the strike. If the ball does swing and seam around a bit, how can we find another way to get a competitive total? And finally, your thoughts on uh, Max O'Dowd's half century. It's a chase where, like you mentioned, if, if Netherlands were to lose a few early wickets, there could have been some nerves. But while he batted slowly, he ensured that Nepal didn't get the kind of wickets that would put the pressure on, on the Dutch. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, Max O'Dowd got the job done. And that's the most important thing. You know, he, he you know boasts a huge, huge amount of experience at the top of the order for the Netherlands. And he's done a good job uh, today, as he has done in previous uh, tournaments. Um, it needed someone to step up and be patient and bat through the difficult times. It wasn't easy batting. A lot of people will probably look at the scorecard and think, well, why didn't they try to chase down that total 
with with overs to spare to help their net run rate, but it wasn't conditions where you could just stand and deliver and take control of a game. Uh, you had to really fight your way through it, and he did that exceptionally well, and he made sure there was certainly no, um, you know, mishap in this early stage of the World Cup. Yeah, and that's how Netherlands get the two points in the one game where they were expected to get the two points. Uh, but just uh, quickly looking ahead, especially given the way that bowlers operate and the kind of surfaces we're seeing, a lot of the teams in Group D will uh, will fear this Dutch attack. Yeah, without a doubt. If if the conditions hold as they have done so far in, in the US, where we've seen in New York the ball seam around and bounce, uh, a little bit awkwardly at times here in Dallas. There's, you know, the surface, as I said, it's 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 a, a very good pitch with a, a lot of grass. So if you're a seam bowler and you can hit a length and be consistent with your control, um, you're in the game constantly. It's quite a, a you know, a nice um, change from what we saw in the IPL, where whether it was just basically stand and deliver, and we saw six after six after six where this is a different brand of cricket that's required, where you need to be cricket smart, you need to navigate conditions, see through difficult little spells or periods of play, and then accelerate at uh, at different times of the game. So, yeah, look, I don't think any team is safe in this, in this World Cup. I think it's going to be a real open World Cup because of the conditions. In America, we're seeing pace bowlers come into the game, and in the Caribbean, we're seeing the spinners having their say. So it's going to be a really interesting couple of weeks. We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, Tom. Always a pleasure having your company on ESPN Kick Info. Nepal go to play Sri Lanka next in Florida. For Netherlands, it's a rematch with South Africa. And don't the Proteus know what the Dutch are capable of. Introducing the epic new Swift. Time to go Swifting.